I spent three weeks on a traditional vision quest in the Sahara Desert and eventually on a solo for five days with no food. Now at the peak of this was that solo, where for five days I was alone on a sand dune away from people with just water, praying for a vision that would guide me in my future life going forward. My purpose really as an adult. Now in this video, I thought I would share the behind the scenes of what this experience was like and why there's a powerful lesson here for anyone trying to figure out what they were born to do and meant to do in life. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. Let's jump in. Now this vision quest is something that people have done traditionally, ancestrally for thousands of years. You know, for a lot of people, this is a coming of age ritual where in the Amazon, they have these young men learn how to be men by going through the bullet ant ceremony, which is an agonizing ceremony where they put bullet ants in gloves and they have to withstand hundreds of bites. And if they cry, they basically lose their man card and they cannot be accepted as a man in the village. And in other tribes like the American natives. There are of course rituals like this, but one of them was the vision quest where a young person goes and prays for a vision about their purpose and their role in their culture and in their society going forward. For me, what prompted this was I'd actually always wanted to do this throughout my life. And this was something I did 15 years ago when I was actually about 21 or 22. So I had booked a ticket to a remote town in Algeria called Taman Rasid. They call it the gateway to the Sahara. So if you've ever had those images of the Berbers with camel caravans with the Tuareg and their faces covered up to here, that's what I lived. And I met with a group there that brought us deep into the desert. We took a Jeep and a camel for one week to get that deep into a remote part of the Sahara Desert on the border of Algeria and Niger. We traveled by camel caravan mostly or by foot. And the center of that ritual was three weeks was a five day solo without food. Now in preparation for this, I had been trying to figure out what my purpose was as a young man, basically. Before I graduated as a senior at college in Clemson, I had this dream one night where I was at the entrance interview for medical school and there there's a famous question they ask you. It's like, well, why do you want to become a doctor? This kind of thing, right? And I don't know if it really weighs anything for them, if it's of any importance, but I remember giving such a deep, profound answer. I knew it would hit them and they would be teary eyed, but they both looked at me and the woman was like, are you sure you want to be a doctor? And I woke up from this dream, like alarmed, unsettled, wondering if I did. So something about that dream really felt like a conversation with my subconscious. Was traditional medical school right for me? It provoked this kind of existential crisis because now I had no purpose as I graduated college. I didn't know what to do. I don't know where to go. So I chose a traditional vision quest, which is what people have done for thousands of years for that exact purpose. Now I'll never forget even walking those little marketplace alleyways in Taman Rasid. And as we took this camel out to the remote Sahara Desert, I just thought for thousands of years, mystics and holy people, and maybe even Jesus came out here. And there's a whole book about the Christian mystics called the Gnostics who were in the desert. They called it the sayings of the desert fathers. It felt like such an ancient place on planet earth. As we gradually got to our spot where we would do our soul, Solo. Part of what they did was they sent a little Tuareg boy with you to follow you as you found your solo spot. So that if there, for example, were a medical emergency and you didn't come back, they would have someone who knew where you were by memory and they could go find you. So for me, the solo experience was very interesting and very intense. I remember for me, part of what I was praying for was really this guidance for what to do next in my life. Tell me what you want me to do, God. And one day I was feeling particularly abandoned. And so I said, you know, send me sort of like a sign or a miracle, something that's un unmistakable. So we're in the remote parts of the Sahara and eventually I see this dragonfly fly by. And dragonflies only exist near water. They have to live on or near water. There's no way. So there was probably an underground cistern or something around there that I couldn't see. So I thought, okay, that's cool, but that's not that convincing or compelling. So then I was like, send me a more compelling sign. I wait 30 minutes, five dragonflies go by. And I was like, all right, well, that's a little weird, but that's not that compelling. That's not like a Moses parting the seas. Not that I'm a saint or anything. So I was like, send me a bigger sign to let me know that some consciousness is listening. I go back to meditation and then 30 minutes an hour later I open my eyes and there's a flock of dragonflies. I see like a cloud over the sun just above my head and it was hundreds of dragonflies and I just start laughing. I mean how could you not? You know as time goes on with this vision quest and with this solo here eventually it led me to a series of coincidences and synchronicities and one of those synchronicities was that it pushed me to study Taoism and the wisdom of the Far East and that coincidence led me to finding an acupuncturist who actually was the person who helped me with my own health problems more than any doctor or GI specialist I'd seen. And meeting him was a piece of my journey to buying a one-way ticket to China to live there, thinking I'd become a monk and a Kung Fu master and all of this for decades, which led me solidly on the path of my purpose, my Dharma, which is this. And so that journey spun into motion 
a series of events that fully planted me on my path here today, where I unequivocally know this is what I'm supposed to be doing, and there's never been a doubt. So I thought I would share this personal story because there are three lessons here that I think will benefit a lot of you. Well, first one for me is that for modern people who often have all the physical amenities of life, all the physical luxuries that kings a thousand years ago would have killed for, we have an epidemic of purposelessness and meaninglessness and disconnection unlike ever before. And one thing I've seen is that that feeling of being lost can be remedied by going on retreat. For thousands of years, holy people, monks, mystics, have gone on retreat for a period of time. That retreat could be three days, it could be six months in solitude, it could be years. Some are ascetics. They spend their entire time in solitary confinement in their cabin in the woods. But one thing that I've seen that helps with people is when you feel lost in life and you aren't sure where to go and you need guidance, there is something special about sequestering yourself away from the world, away from the noise, which allows that reconnection with oneself. So if you feel like there is something that you are trying to find an answer to, you need guidance on, disconnecting from the modern world and going on retreat somewhere where there's solitude and there's not technology can be one thing that rapidly connects you back to yourself because you're no longer influenced by the words of other people, their opinions. You're not influenced by the thoughts of society, why technology or someone says on their Instagram. You're not influenced by your spouse or friends. It's just you reconnecting with you. The second lesson is that this sort of peace, quiet, and solitude is the best way, not just to get guidance for answers in life, but to reconnect yourself. If you feel like you've been aimlessly wandering for years and you're like, what do I want from my life? On a deep, spiritual, emotional point of view perspective, you have to think about that. But you can't do that necessarily by just sitting logically in the middle of your day day life. You need to remove yourself from your day-to-day -day life to get a clear channel back to yourself. And that happens by withdrawing from day-to-day -day life, which is why holy people have always done retreats to go deep inward and to shut the doors and close the windows of all outside stimulation and to only be connected back to here. If you feel you've lost that connection to yourself, what do I want? What do I want to do? What's my purpose? Going into some kind of solitary phase for a short period of time can be the thing that helps. And finally, the third lesson for me is to trust your inner guidance. You know, one thing that is so challenging about the modern world is that because there's so much external data that our ancestors never had to deal with, it is harder than ever to trust your inner guidance. That guidance you may call God, depending on your beliefs. You may call it your gut, your instincts, or your intuition. But whatever it is, it is a real thing. And your instincts know the path that is for you. They know the people you should be around. They know the mates you should marry and the ones you should not marry. They know somehow what you already want and what you already supposed to become and who you are. The difficulty is not that there is no guidance. The difficulty is always in trusting that guidance. And I have found that in the times where I am the most distrustful of my inner guidance, getting away and shutting the doors, closing the windows, gives me the clearest message of what that guidance is saying. And from there, it is having the faith and the trust to be able to act on that, not knowing where it's going to lead you, but knowing it is always leading you on the right path. So in my mind, these are some of the three big benefits of going on retreat and finding these ways to reconnect with yourself. So going on retreat is one of the four daily practices that this famously long-lived monk, Li Qingyun, talks about in his four daily rituals to live a long life according to traditional Chinese medicine. It's in the free guide. It's the first link below this video. You can also go to dralexheim.com forward slash free to download it. But he talks about how to keep a quiet heart and how to reconnect to some of these qualities we talked about, as well as three other practices you probably would find interesting. Check it out there, you guys. And also, I have another related video on some of these inner journeys into the spirit right here.